Right, I think this video is uh, going to come with a couple of warnings. One, it's probably going to turn out to be quite long. So if you like the long videos, thumbs up. If you don't, do what you normally do. I'm sure you fast forward or whatever to any good bits. Anyway, so the second warning is I've been moving a lot of pots about and digging about. So I have got dirty hands. So if that offends you, I'm sorry. Anyway, let's get into the video. We've got everything really I want to overwinter into the hothouse. So we'll go through some of the palms and plants in there. Um, we have got a couple just to go indoors. So we've got a couple of uh, pots of Eureka palm there. And we've also got the Musa Dwarf Cavendish, which I was gonna leave in the ground and let die, but a bit wasteful, so we're gonna we're saving them. So we've got a couple of pots we've got to squeeze in the house there, but so yeah, basically this is how it's gonna be over the winter. Um look back on my previous videos for details about the hot house. I'm not gonna go into all that now, I'm just gonna go through the plants that are gonna be staying in here. So we have got a lot of palms, some mainly sort of half hardy. Um, a lot of the phoenix species, some are um, recovering. So hence, they're gonna be protected. And some are uh, probably quite not as hardy as others, so we're, we're gonna protect them all. So we've got a couple of the date palms we grew from seed there. So that's Phoenix Dectolifera. We've got a Phoenix Rupercola. We've got Phoenix Robolini. Um, we've got Phoenix Sylvestris. I think this one's Reglinata. And this one is a Collis, which is like a trunkless Phoenix. And then we've got some of the uh, living stoners. So we've got Australis, Decora, and Genensis, along with, uh, we've got a small princeps palm here, Tracheocarpus princeps, and just various other little bits and pieces tucked in. I have got, I haven't done, really mentioned this in the video, in any videos I've done. So this is a boot here, Odorata, but it's a variation stricter. So it's supposed to have straight, more upright leaves rather than the yachin. And this is one I bought off eBay, um, probably beginning of summer. And it's got the original tag in here. So it's actually, it says 2010. So it's, <laughs> believe it or not, 13 years old. It wasn't a very small pot when I got it, so obviously I've put it in a big pot and hopefully we can get some growth on that next year. Um, lemon trees grown from seed, got a couple of small monsteras, deliciosa, so they're, they're hardier than you think, that will should overwinter okay in here. Um, again, just a, a few sort of random stuff, interestingly, we might all summer for these. This is the uh, Trachycarpus um, latisectus. So we've actually had one germinate just in the last couple of weeks. I've noticed this leaf popping up. So whether we'll get any more or not, whether that's just the one. But yeah, that's sort of waited all summer, almost sort of give up hope. And then there you go. All right, so a lot of small Trachycarpus fortunae underneath here. Um, we've got the avocado tree we grew from seed a couple of years back. Um, sago palm, my biggest one, which is in a pot, so I just move that out every year, keep that looking nice. Obviously, there's some cordyline red star there. Um, Quite small pot specimens, so they'll be protected in here. The can of Stuttgart, I'm going to see if that 
stays uh, in full leaf rather than dying back. Just out of interest. So we've got some quite nice variegation on that. Um, we've got the Syaphia cooperi. So this is the, the big one. There's actually three plants in one in there. So that's frost sensitive that will take damage. So this, this did totally defoliate last year. Um, I had the polytunnel in this area and I got down to minus two stroke three and that defoliated at that. So hopefully this year just kept frost free. We should keep all the leaves or fronds and uh, yeah, get it going next year. So we've got the big Sterilitza Nikolai, giant bird of paradise. So I did cut a lot of leaves off this. Um, just do so at such a wide splay on them, I had to trim them back. So we've basically got, we're down to the three big centre leaves, but we have got um, some pups coming out. And interestingly, I think, now I'm not quite sure, but we might have a flower coming. So that'll be for next year. It's either that or pup come out the the main trunk which I don't think so it could be a flower fingers crossed so that'll be interesting so that'll be the blue and white flower um got a Washingtonia robusta which is in the pot so why not bring it in we've got the uh, alocasia there that is uh calculator um no, sorry, no it isn't. This is the Macariza, which never really got any big leaves this year, just lots of little leaves. But it did die back from last year, so that you see the, the sort of trunks died off, and these are all new uh, offshoots on that. Then we've just got some small palms and little divisions of collocations along the window ledge there. So that's kind of uh, that area. So coming round, we've got sort of the brightest spot because the sun's sort of facing us um most of the winters is south facing so we've got the uh what have we got venus flytrap there and some senior which are cold hardy but they will die back and look a bit rough if left outside so i'm going to keep them in here We've got some uh, Sable Miner that we've done seedlings from, or we'll sow some seeds to begin the year. So they're on the step there, along with the Sable Palmetto. Not growing too badly. Um, just some sort of random stuff. Got some small Sheffalaras here, which is sort of recovering. And then we've got some small, again, uh, giant bird of paradise, but quite small ones here. Perfectly hardy. And if, actually, I've got one here which I grew from seed begin the year. And uh, as long as they don't get a frost, they'll be perfectly happy. A lot of uh, alocasias in this corner. So we've got Petora, Calculator, um, another sweaty eye, that one. Um, yeah, so there's a few alocasias which um, seem to survive the winter. They sort of more or less go dormant. Hopefully they'll keep their leaves. That's a big macariza there. And we've also got a sumo here, which is loads in a pot, which I'm going to have to divide out next year. Also got a couple of, well, a Thai giant here, which I grew from seed. So we're going to see if that does over winter, see if that survives or not. I won't hold any expectations on that and just a load of uh, colocasia escalenta there and a money tree um yeah so again some of the more cold sensitive palms down here some that are in recovery again from last winter um this is another phoenix dectylifera which took a I mean, they, they were outside all winter last year, just with overhead protection. Um, so they stayed a bit dry, but they got the full cold and they did suffer, but they're still alive. 
So yeah, Dectolifera, um, maybe three years old from seed. This is a little, uh, what was it, Phoenix Canariensis, that one, which I dug up. And as you can see, it's got one little tiny leaf on it, but I, I was going to chuck it out, but why not keep it? Um, we've got loads of Tetrapanix pups we've been digging up throughout the, the year. Um, not all of them make it when you dig them up, some don't have much roots, but we've got about 10 or 12 there, which are all pretty good. We have got a, this is a Tetrapanix Rex, and uh, this is a, in a pot. So I'm going to get that in the ground next year, but I would like to see if it keeps its leaves over winter with a little bit of protection. Um, obviously, we've got the big queen palm here. Uh, I did measure the ceiling height. It's just over 10 foot, and that is sort of touching the, the ceiling, so we're, we're 10 foot in the pot on that. But that's been, since I got it, I don't know, five weeks ago or so, it has actually pushed out a new spear and starting to open up but obviously that's going to slow right down now that the temperatures are really sort of staying quite cool and um, I have got this is another standard queen palm here which I've had for a couple of years quite slow but still alive and we've got another it's the queen palm this is the mountain forms this is the slightly hardier version and that's even slower Um, so we've got another cord line here, this is uh, salsa, it's a nice sort of purpley pink, um, why not protect it, it's not hardy as some others. And we've got some small Washingtonia robustas here, which again were out all last winter and took uh, quite a lot of damage, hence the deformed little leaves, but yeah we'll, we'll protect that a little bit better this year. Um, we've got a... Trechicarpus cross here, so this is Fortuna cross Nanus. Um, that was out all last winter and it did spear pull, but it has survived and grown again. We've also got uh, a couple left over from what well, I grew from seed a couple of years back. These are filler busters so cross between filifera and robusta and uh, I kept a couple back and they haven't really grown much this year but it's been quite cool so I'm gonna get these in the ground next year yeah lots of little sort of divisions and cuttings at the back there on the, the windowsill nothing really of note to, to mention there we have got a small Siafia cooper eye which I don't know, looking a bit rough, could do with repotting really, but looking a bit yellowy, but so we'll we'll keep that in here. We've got the Thailandia del Barta, or something to that description. Done well this year. It was in an aquatic situation, so it was half submerged in water, so I've cut a lot of the roots off. We can see it is bulging out of the pot, so I'm going to have to cut the pot out and divide that up next year. And that's got a decent bit of height on it and we have got some flowers at the top as well. Um, Xanthodesia, white giant. So again, that was in an aquatic planter situation, so half submerged. And yeah, I'd like to keep the foliage on that for, for next year, so we're gonna protect that in here. And I might even divide some out because there's four or five little ones around the, the main plant. Um, we've got some sables here, so we'll quickly go through them. We've got a couple of sable riverside, which again were out most of the last winter, so did take some damage on the older fronds, but um, this year we've got a couple of new fronds on them, they're looking good. Um, yeah, so two able, uh, sable riverside, one sable, uh, no, sorry, two sable palmettos. These are slightly bigger than the obviously the ones I grew from seed. These are the ones I've had for a couple of years, so that they've been growing quite well. Nice sort of bluey leaves on them. And also we've got Sable Louisiana 
and then the curtain there as well along with the Brahea Almata which I grew from seed earlier this year and so what that that's really the the stuff everything in pots obviously comes in for protection and this is going to be just kept frost free so the I've got a small heater here and it's a sort of small greenhouse fan heater that's nothing special um, it is two kilowatt but the switch box I've got the the highest uh, what on that is uh, 1.7 kilowatt I believe so I've switched it down to half power so it's only one kilowatt so it's not going to be dangerous to try and overload the system as it were so what I do is I do have a thermostat on this it only comes it comes on and it drops below it comes on between two and four degrees basically so it drops below it drops below two degrees that'll come on and it'll switch off at four degrees and I've also got it set with the temperature and um, I have it right down so it doesn't blast out hot air it just blows out warm air so I'd rather have it so it's really drawn quite a low energy consumption but that'll just be on for a bit longer so it's the same difference you're still using the same energy but you're just doing it in a gentler way rather than blasting the hot hot air for five minutes and then going cold again that's just a, a nice gentle light heat but that's my theory on that so that's just a just a little note on that and we've got a uh, the Nikau palm there the polystylus cepeda um, put one in the ground and this one staying in the pots this is my insurance one in case the one in the ground that make in case we have a stupid cold winter and something goes wrong whatever I've got a backup because these are quite hard to get hold of and quite expensive but they are very nice and that sort of leads to the the permanent plantings which again nothing nothing you see here is going to be taken in this is all planted in the ground all bit in raised beds but um, yeah it's going to be left to its own devices so again we've got a this is a Cyagris coronata so similar to the queen palm but with silvery under sides to the leaves we've got a couple of giant bird of paradise either side and just loads of elephant ears colocasia and alocasia we've got a couple of um, Kentia palms again either side one either side which are getting a bit buried at the moment with all the the leaves but I'm sure some of these uh, will die down over the winter um, and loads of sort of just common house plants so we've got sort of a begonia rex there which has been in flower for the last few weeks um, some clafias nice white fusion we've got a load of uh, bromeliads here which you know that they'll take a take it down to low temperatures as long as they don't get frosted uh, split leaf philodendron got a couple of small ones of them which i'm gonna get growing next year and getting big hopefully and yeah so the all the collocation allocations are staying in in the ground so we've got some Petoras, so again one each side we've got the redemption again one each side I've taken a load of pups off them and I've got them indoors for an insurance policy so we'll see if they survive at cooler temperatures and we've got the Maui gold we've got Thai giant um, this one's an interesting one it's just a shop bought taro and that's got quite big and we've got some standard bird of paradise again just either side which again as long as they don't get frosted they're, they're absolutely fine now just sit there over winter no problem um jack's giant again these are only been in here for probably about seven eight weeks or so really sort of end of summer i sort of finished this and got this planted up so yeah for for that shorter period this decent sized leaves on that and then we've got the pharaoh's mask which is uh, always quite nice to see 
and new leaf now open on that. And we've got some uh, black gecko here, which has sort of got got drowned out by the other leaves, so they they stayed quite small. So yeah, I mean, I'm obviously not going for every little plant, but we have got loads of little stuff tucked in here. Um, oh yeah, we've got monstera in the corner there, which would do quite well over winter. And this side we've got a decursifer, which is similar to Deliciosa, but uh, supposed to be a little bit hardier and slightly different leaf shape. So yeah, I mean, there's some symmetry in the in the plantings, and yeah, in time we're going to get these. Um, the big, um, these big climb and philodendrons, they're going to go up to the ceiling and across. And yeah, hopefully in a year or two, this whole back wall, you won't be able to see it in the garden, that'll just be green foliage. Right, so um, yeah, I don't think we need to go on much more. So again, just heated. So the lowest it can go in here is two degrees, and that heat will go off at four degrees. We've got a little um light there to motion sensor so as soon as i walk in it comes on for the dark nights and we are going to have the the ceiling fan running all the time and i did bubble wrap the the, the roof just because of condensation because i don't really want lots of water drips drip 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 all the time on a lot of these plants they want to be kept a bit drier so we bubble wrapped it so it all sort of drips down the sides really so stuff on the shelves in small pots they could probably do with a, a little bit of moisture so it's not going to hurt there so that is pretty much it if there are any questions please feel free to ask so yeah this is the uh Cycas revoluta, which was out in the garden last year, and the, I think the main one has shown no signs of growth, the main growing point, but the uh, five or six pups come up around it, so quite quite tough plants, even if the, the main one will die, the root is hardy, and that will regrow from side shoots. All right, so I think we'll leave it there. So as it is at the moment, it is getting towards November and it has cooled down the last couple of weeks. We've not really been getting above 20 degrees in here just due to the fact that there's been no sun. And when the sun does come out, that's obviously not heating up as much as it would in summer. Still, still have a, a window open during the day and to shut it at night. But yeah, things haven't really, they've stopped growing, but certainly not shown any signs of uh, any any wear and tear of the, the cooler weather, just just really sort of really slowed down. I know the uh, Redemption sent out a bit of a funny deformed leaf, but then threw it another bit of a strange one, which sort of joint in the middle there but now I suppose things will slow down and I would expect obviously uh, a lot of this foliage to die down over winter um, I think we did actually get a flower on the white lava so that's the white lava quite nice and that just just flowered so we'll see well I don't know if that'll uh, give out fertile seeds or not but it's always worth a go right let's uh, leave it there we thanks for for watching and we'll catch you on the next one